Story 1, The Hidden Roommate, by Monica. I went to a pretty big university, and during my sophomore year, I moved into one of the older dormitories on campus. It was one of those buildings with long, dimly lit hallways and creaky wooden floors. I always joked that it looked like something out of a horror movie, but little did I know. My roommate, Jenna, and I got along pretty well. We weren't best friends, but we respected each other's space and had a good system going. One night, she told me she was going home for the weekend. Cool, I thought. I'd have the room to myself. That Friday night, I was up late, binge-watching a show on my laptop with my headphones on. Around 2 a.m., I decided to call it a night. As I was about to close my laptop, I heard a noise. It sounded like the door creaking open. I figured Jenna might have changed her mind and decided to come back. I took off my headphones and turned around, but no one was there. The door was slightly ajar, which was weird because I distinctly remembered locking it. I shrugged it off, thinking maybe I'd forgotten. I went to bed, but I felt uneasy. You know that feeling you get when you think you're being watched? Yeah, that feeling. I tried to forget about it, telling myself I was just being paranoid. But then, I heard it. Soft, deliberate footsteps. They were coming from the direction of our closet. I froze, holding my breath in fear. I thought about calling out, but something told me not to. The footsteps stopped right next to my bed. I could hear someone breathing, slow and heavy. I kept my eyes shut tight, praying they'd just go away. After what seemed like forever, the footsteps retreated, and I heard the door creak open and close again. I waited a few minutes, trying to gather the courage to move. When I finally did, I turned on all the lights and checked the room. Nothing was out of place. The closet was empty. I locked the door and pushed my desk chair against it, just in case. I didn't sleep a wink that night. The next morning, I reported the incident to campus security. They did a sweep of the building, but found nothing. They suggested maybe it was a drunk student who'd entered the wrong room, but I knew what I'd heard and I knew it wasn't Jenna. She confirmed she hadn't returned that night. A few days later, the RA called a meeting for our floor. Turns out, I wasn't the only one who'd had a strange encounter. Two other girls down the hall had experienced something similar. They'd heard footsteps and felt like someone was in their room. But the creepiest part? One of them found a small, makeshift bed in the back of her closet, complete with a pillow and a blanket. Someone had been living in our dormitory, moving room to room. Campus security increased their patrols and eventually they caught the guy. He was a former student who'd been living in the dorms undetected for weeks. He'd been sneaking into rooms, watching students as they slept. It's terrifying to think about. I moved out of that dorm shortly after. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Even now, years later, I always double check my locks and closets before going to bed. You never know who might be lurking around. Story 2 The Roommate's Secret Submitted by Brandy. I was in my second year of college, living in the dorms. My roommate Carmen was always a bit of a night owl, often coming in late after I'd already gone to bed. I never thought much of it. College life, right? One night, I woke up to the sound of the door creaking open. 
I figured it was Carmen coming in late again, but when I glanced at my phone, it was only 1 a.m., a bit early for her. I heard soft, muffled sobs. Concerned, I sat up and squinted in the dim light. Carmen was sitting on her bed, her back to me, her shoulders shaking. Hey, are you okay? I asked, rubbing my eyes. She didn't respond. Instead, she slowly turned to face me. Her face was pale, eyes red and swollen. She looked terrified. There's someone following me, she whispered. Genuinely concerned, I asked, what? Who? She shook her head, tears streaming down her face. I, I don't know, but he's been following me for weeks. Everywhere I go, I see him. At the library, the cafeteria, even outside our dorm. Tonight, he was closer than ever. At this point, I was actually frightened. Why didn't you tell anyone? We need to report this. She looked down, her voice barely audible. I thought I was being paranoid, but tonight he whispered my name as I was entering the building. I felt sick. We locked our door and I stayed up with her for the rest of the night. The next day, we reported it to campus security. They promised to increase patrols and keep an eye out. For a few days, things seemed normal. Carmen seemed a bit more relaxed and I hoped maybe the guy had gotten scared off. But one evening, as I was studying in the common room, I got a text from Carmen. He's here in the building. I saw him in the hallway. I bolted upstairs, adrenaline coursing through my veins. As I approached our door, I noticed it was cracked open. I pushed it open as quietly as I could, my heart in my throat. The room was a mess. Carmen's things were scattered everywhere, but there was no sign of her or him. I called the police immediately. They searched the entire building and surrounding areas, but found no trace of Carmen or the mysterious stalker. Days turned into weeks. The entire campus was on edge. Flyers with Carmen's face were everywhere, but she was just gone. I couldn't sleep. Every little sound made me jump. I was terrified that whoever took Carmen would come for me next. I moved out of the dorms and into an off-campus apartment with a few friends, but the fear never left me. A few months later, they found Carmen alive, but traumatized. She had been held captive in an old, abandoned house just a few miles from campus. The guy was some psycho who had become obsessed with her after seeing her at a campus event. Carmen left school and went back home to recover. We kept in touch for a while, but she wanted to move on and forget the whole ordeal. I don't blame her. I share this not to scare anyone, but as a reminder to always trust your instincts. If you feel like you're being watched or followed, tell someone. Don't wait until it's too late. Story 3 The Dean's List Submitted by Jinky I was in my final year of college, living in a dormitory. I had a roommate named Sarah. She was nice, and we got along well. She was a bit of an introvert, always reading or studying, and she had this habit of going for late night walks. I thought it was odd, but everyone has their own way of dealing with stress, right? One night, I woke up around 3 a.m. to find Sarah's bed empty. Not unusual, given her nocturnal habits. I figured she was out on one of her walks. But when I looked over at her desk, I noticed something. Her diary was open, and there was a photo beside it. Being curious, I took a closer look. The photo was of Sarah, but she looked different. Her eyes were wide, and there was this eerie, vacant expression on her face. She was standing in front of a dilapidated building, 
which I then recognized as the old, abandoned dorm on the far end of campus. Rumor was that it closed down after some strange incidents, but no one really knew the details. Beside the photo, her diary had an entry. It read, He told me to come again tonight. I don't want to, but I can't resist. I feel drawn to that place. I'm scared. Worried, I thought. Who was he? And why was Sarah going to that creepy old building? I decided to wait for her to come back and confront her about it. Hours passed, and there was no sign of Sarah. The sun was about to rise, and I was becoming concerned. I decided to go look for her. I knew it was a bad idea to go to that old dormitory, but something told me that's where she'd be. The building was even creepier in person. The windows were boarded up and the entrance was chained shut. But as I approached, I noticed one of the windows on the ground floor was slightly open. I squeezed through it and began searching for Sarah. The place was a mess. Broken furniture, graffiti, and a thick layer of dust everywhere. As I walked through the dimly lit corridors, I heard a faint whisper. Following the sound, I reached a room at the end of the hall. The door was open just enough that I could see Sarah inside, standing in the middle of the room, staring at the wall. I called out to her, but she didn't respond. I stepped closer and realized she was in some sort of trance. Her eyes were wide open, just like in the photo. On the wall, there was a huge mural of a man with sunken, piercing eyes. It felt like he was staring right into my soul. Suddenly, Sarah began to speak in a voice that wasn't hers. You shouldn't be here, she said. I tried to snap her out of it, but she just kept repeating that phrase. I was terrified. I grabbed her arm and tried to pull her out of that room, but she resisted. It took all my strength to drag her out of the building. Once we were outside, Sarah collapsed. I called for help, and she was taken to the hospital. She had no memory of what happened or why she was in that building. After some research, I found out that the mural was of a former dean of the college who had gone insane and was rumored to have done some unspeakable things in that old dormitory. Some said it seemed like he could control minds. Sarah transferred to another college after that incident. We lost touch, but I often wonder if she's okay. I never went near that building again, and it was eventually torn down. But what actually horrifies me? Sometimes, late at night, I feel an urge to go for a walk, and I find myself drawn to the spot where the old dorm used to be. I'm terrified that one day I won't be able to resist.